Hiya, my name is Jay and welcome back to Boomy Reptile Sanctuary, my first ever playthrough of Planet Zoo on this YouTube channel. So today what we're going to be doing is tackling building an entrance plaza and a flamingo habitat at the start of the park. And as you can see right now on screen we've begun. This entrance plaza actually took me a lot longer than I expected. I was hoping to kind of get into a bit of a flow with things and just kind of get building but it ended up looking um, almost like a copy and paste of the research center we did earlier so I had to kind of tweak a lot of things, try out a lot of different ideas and I cut out a lot of that footage just because it's all stuff you've seen me do in the previous episode. And by the end I think I've managed to get a pretty good entrance plaza going. As you can see we start off with a few guest amenities, an information booth, a few signs, um, couple food and drink outlets here and there. And as we go along, I will also put down a greenhouse on top of this building, which I thought was a quite a cool little um, addition. Because as you can see, we're building in a temperate climate, but a lot of the animals we're going to be using are most likely from more of a tropical climate. So I was thinking, yeah, it makes sense if they want plants to suit these animals. Um, they'd have a greenhouse to grow them in. So I just plop one up there. I might make a larger one later down the line, something like a botanical greenhouse that people can walk through, that guests can ha have a look at, see all these different plants from all these animals' native habitats. I think that would be quite a cool idea. But yeah, this took a bit longer than I expected, but once it's done, I was quite happy with it. I built this really modern looking canopy that stretches across the plaza, and you'll be able to see that in the cinematic shots at about the five minute mark. And I also string up some little string lights, fairy lights, across the canopy so it looks really lovely at night. I'm not sure if I left in any night shots actually, but if not, um, there'll be some in the next episode. And yeah, one thing I want to do, which I haven't done in this episode, and probably will do in the next, um, or between episodes, is build a big sign that actually says Boomy Reptile Sanctuary. I'll probably place that kind of just to the left of where these buildings are so that it's just really visible when you come in because on the right of where you come in will be the flamingo habitat and you'll be able to see me build that right after the cinematic for this section which is the entrance plaza and yeah until then I will leave you to it and I will return right after the cinematics for the entrance
Alright, so here we are getting started on our flamingo habitat. Now, flamingos, well, you might think, oh, they're not exactly reptiles, are they? Well, I mean, they kind of are. They're birds, and birds, as you might know, are not only the descendants of dinosaurs, but they are, in fact, dinosaurs themselves. Birds are avian maniraptorans, so they're they're descended from many raptors, but they're still considered part of the same group. So, yeah, birds are dinosaurs. And flamingos are a pretty cool bird. You see them in pretty much every single park, be it, you know, zoos, nature reserves, even botanical gardens. You just see flamingos everywhere. And for good reason. Uh, as far as um, the IUCN are concerned in regard to whether or not it's endangered, it's least concern, meaning they're just kind of everywhere. And the subspecies, uh, sorry, the species that we have in the game are, is the greater flamingo, and they're just the most widespread. They're kind of everywhere, <laughs> so um, they're definitely not um, in danger, and they're definitely fine to be kind of sitting around parks. As far as their welfare is concerned, they're not overly picky. They just seem to be quite happy sitting around whichever pond they've been given. And they live in really large social groups as well. So later you'll be able to see me plop down about 12 of them, and by the time the next episode comes around, they will have reproduced about 20. They, yeah, they reproduce pretty fast in the game, which I don't mind, um, with flamingos especially because they do live in such large groups. In fact, the game says you can keep them at numbers up to about 500, which I'm not going to try because I think 500 flamingos is probably going to crash the game. But at the same time, that's pretty cool. One thing I found out about flamingos actually that I thought was really quite cute was the fact that each flamingo actually only lays one egg and it's like neatly perched on top of a tiny mud mound that they'll build. Which is kind of a cute thought. Imagine that, just a tiny little egg on top of a mud mound. Just one egg to be protected by its mom. It's quite a cute idea. But yeah, that's something I think is missing from this game that I would really like is um, eggs. A lot of the egg laying animals don't lay eggs. They just kind of... um pop out babies when you're not looking. I think eggs would be a really cool feature to have. It might be difficult to implement gameplay-wise. Um, obviously, I'm not a game designer. I don't know the nitty-gritty and how difficult that would be to actually implement. But it would be pretty cool. We had something similar in Zoo Tycoon 2, where if an animal was to uh, reproduce, you'd have the eggs as well, and then the eggs would hatch, and then you'd have the babies. But again, uh, that is such a minor nitpick. I love how the animals look regardless and how they behave and yeah as you can see with this <laughs> I should actually be talking about the flamingo habitat itself as you can see we've placed down about a billion rocks I really like using rock work to bring out the details it just adds so much texture to the habitat and it also gives you lots of different perches um, on which the animals can actually traverse as well as different perches for where you can add lots of different foliage and I think that's quite cool uh, speaking of foliage, the foliage in this game is beautiful. It's so, so, so gorgeous. And I like using as much of it as possible. In this episode, you're going to see me choose a lot of different types of foliage to kind of set the tone for the rest of the series and what kind of foliage we'll be using around the park itself. Maybe not within specific habitats, but across the park as a whole, along the pedestrian walkways and along different buildings. Some of my favourites include the bracken ferns and the lady ferns, those are both beautiful. I love ferns, they're like my favourite plant. <laughs> and you can see me plop down a lot of ferns as we go along here, just kind of in between the nooks and crannies of all the rocks and to kind of fill out areas. Um, as far as bigger trees go, I'm not using too many for this first uh, habitat. I'm using um, the mangrove apple tree and as well as the birch tree I believe. And the bird tree is already quite present throughout this map, so I thought, okay, that's a pretty natural thing to add. Um, but the mangrove apple is a bit more tropical, and I thought, okay, that'll give people, as they come in, a bit of a taste of what sort of foliage they're going to see as they go on into different habitats. Um, aside from that, yeah, I uh, use a lot of low line foliage. The thing is about the flamingos in this game is they don't actually want very much um, in terms of shrubbery or trees. So they're not particularly happy with that layout, but I've managed to bump up their welfare overall to um, a good level, so they don't mind too much. I also put down a re relatively ramshackle uh, shelter later on, and I also make a custom fence to go to go around this habitat. 
Now, that took me a while as well. I actually played around with a lot of the pieces, trying to find a, a bit of a cute um, idea for what sort of fence to go with. Eventually, I ended up with using some of these African-themed pieces, and they fit really well. They just kind of go around the more pedestrian side of things, and the flamingos can't escape it, which is great. <laughs> And I also had a lot of enrichment objects for the flamingos. You'll see me put down a foraging pond, um, a mobile, just so they can play with it, and stuff like that. And towards the end, you'll see me plop down the actual flamingos. And they, they are just the best. I love them. I haven't had a chance to play with every single animal in the game. Um, when I do, I might make a bit of a video, you know, of my top 10 favorite animals, top 10 least favorite. I can't imagine I have a least favorite. So far, I've loved everything from like the, you know, numerous antelopes to all the different reptiles. Um, spoiler alert, the Indian gharial is one of the best animals in the game. It's just beautiful. I love how it moves. I love the design. Um, when you see how the scales glisten after it comes out of the water, it's, it's incredible. This game is genuinely so good at displaying the animals in all their full glory for people to see. And yeah, as we come along here, I think I'm pretty much done with things to say, so I might just leave you to it. As we're going along, you're going to see me flesh out this enclosure a lot more. Um, and towards the end, we'll have some cinematic shots of both the flamingo habitat and, again, of the um, entrance plaza. So yeah, I'll leave you to it. Thanks again for watching. If you like what you're seeing, please do subscribe and like the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!